Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my map. Today I'll be going over what exactly Mystic is, how it works, and how to get started with playing it, as well as some basic rules and guidelines so everything makes a little bit more sense as it's kind of complicated on paper. Alright, to get started, installation. That's pretty important. Now for the world and characters, it's uh, pretty simple, uh, but I'll go through with you guys real quick anyway and show you how to best organize the files. So once you've downloaded whatever version of Mystic you're playing on, uh, you want to extract the RAR file and use using uh, 7-zip, WinRAR, or whatever extracting program you use. Once that's done, I recommend finding somewhere to keep the newly created folder, as it will make the new playthroughs much easier to manage. Once that's taken care of, open the Worlds folder and copy all of the files. Open your Terraria Worlds folder, which can be found on PC, by going to Documents, My Games, Terraria, and then Worlds. You don't want to paste all those files in there. For multiplayer, only the host needs to install the world files, but you should probably just install them anyway. For characters, we can just leave them where they are for now, and we'll get back to them later. Mystic comes with a wave bank of hand-picked tracks that more fit the environment and tone of the world and help make Mystic more of a unique and memorable experience, and it's for these reasons I highly recommend that you use it, but it isn't necessary. I've put a set of instructions on how to install the soundtrack in the RAR as a .txt file. If you guys want a video of me explaining how to do this, just let me know, but it shouldn't be too difficult. TerraSaver was extremely useful in the creation of Mystic, and now it's going to be extremely useful for you too. Uh, TerraSaver, it's a browser-based save editor for Terraria, and now we're primarily going to be using it for naming your character right now. Uh, so to get started, you're going to want to go to this link right here, and I'll put it in the description too if you don't want to have to just type that in. And you're going to want to load up the class that you want to play from the currently available 13 by finding its .plr or player file in the players folder in the mystic folder. M means fe uh, male and F means female. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you change the format of the, to the most recent version of Terraria. Once that's done, you can rename your character whatever you want. You can also change the appearance of your character here if you wish, but each character already has a starting appearance, so if you don't want to change that, they won't look really weird, hopefully, uh, but uh, you shouldn't have to change anything else other than those things. Now that we have our character renamed using TerraSaver, we can save and rename the PLR file to the name of your character and move the file into the players folder found on your PC at Documents, My Games, Terraria, and then Players. And now we're ready to play! can load up Terraria, select our newly made character, and the main Mystic world file, and start playing Mystic. Now before you go off and start playing, there are some basic rules and guidelines that you need to be aware of in order to get the best experience out of Mystic. You can find all the rules in the Mystic Anti rulebook, but I'm going to go over some of the more important ones real quick so you don't have to read through it all. Because of the nature of the map, it being a survival adventure hybrid map, the line between blocks that you can mine and those that you can't can be a little blurry at times, but here are some general guidelines for what you can and can't do regarding those. One, you can't break or place any blocks in towns, puzzle areas, dungeons, flashback events, or any obviously handmade structure, unless stated otherwise. Blocks are placed where they are for a reason. 2. You can mine ores whenever you see them, except the titanium barrier around the jungle dungeon, which you probably won't run into anyway. 3. You can place blocks in your player room, crafting room and anywhere that you can also mine. So if you're mining out in I know the Asgard mines, you can obviously place blocks because you can mine them too and help them get around your mine more easily. There are a couple different types of keys in Mystic and there are some rules regarding their use. Whenever you find a golden key in the world, there is a corresponding locked chest nearby, generally in the same area, but you don't necessarily have to open that chest with the key. 
However, what you can't do is use golden keys that you find in, like in the surface world to open chests in the dungeon, nor can you do this uh, vice versa, which is, would be to use those keys you find on the surface to open those in the dungeon. There are also shadow keys, which work normally. You can use them however you want. There are no rules dictating on how you use them. And in Mystic, there are also numerous places where you'll be given a lever or a switch, and these also act as keys, more like to a door rather than a chest, however, and will give you access to certain areas. Whenever you're given one, you'll be told where to place it, or you'll at least get a hint as to where to place it. So it shouldn't be too hard to find out, you know, where you have to place it to get access to something. You cannot place switches or levers unless you are told to, and you can't use a given switch somewhere that you're not told to. Now I'll be going over how the class and talent systems work as they are an integral part of the Mystic experience. As of Alpha version 0.6.1, there are 13 playable classes, each with their own unique starting gear and stats, as well as their own talent tree. There will be a link to the class spreadsheet where you can look at every class's gear and talent trees in the description. Each item is linked to the Terraria wiki for your convenience. Talents, to put them simply, are just items that are unlocked by reaching certain milestones, such as killing the wall of flesh or a mechanical boss. The system works just as it does in other games with a talent tree mechanic. Upon reaching a milestone, you are allowed to choose any single item from the corresponding unlocked tier of your class's talent tree. The talent tree acts as a way of diversifying the roster of classes and adds an extreme level replayability as well as defining a class's role. In multiplayer, your choice of a talent is final upon leaving the area, while in single player you may return to switch talents as you please. Talent tiers are unlocked as follows. Tier 1, to feed the eye and brain of Cthulhu. Tier 2, to feed the wall of flesh. And Tier 3, to feed any mechanical boss. Also, upon reaching Tier 1, you are awarded with a pet specific to your class and a demon heart, just in case, in Tier 2. Finally, I'll be going over some of the other mechanics that make Mystic unique, and I'll explain how they work and how to interact with them. A lot of your time in Mystic will be spent doing quests, either main or side, so I'll quickly explain how they work, as well as how to manage quest items and rewards. Unfortunately, there is no quest log, but all the information needed regarding a quest can be found on a sign, usually next to an NPC, which is a mannequin. Reading the sign should give you enough information on where to go, what you need, and what to do, so read closely. In each town area, there is a quest board with four quests each. The top row of signs explains the quest, while the bottom row displays what items are needed to complete the quest and the reward for completing it. These can be completed at any time and in any order. To complete quests, simply put the required items in the chest below its sign and receive your rewards. If there are eight of the same item in the rewards, each player takes one. Leftovers are left in the chest. Happy questing! The player hub is an area that is unlocked upon activating your first fast travel station, and you'll be teleported there upon using the teleport. The player hub will serve as your base of operations in Mystic, as it is where you'll be able to store your items and crafting stations and decorate your own room. The player hub also contains the fast travel stations, the talent tree, or tier unlocks, and a handy entrance to the dungeon once you get there. Each town area found in the world of Mystic features a teleporter that can be used to fast travel between other areas and the player hub. In order to unlock an area's teleporter, you must find the giant gem that corresponds with it and place it in its socket. Once you've done that, you may use the teleporter and you've now unlocked the area in the fast travel section of the player hub. Unlocked areas will light up when you walk over them in the player hub. However, note that as of this recording, there is an issue where this will be inverted upon unlocking the area, and you must manually fix the issue in-game each time you unlock a new area. Shops are scattered all around the world of Mystic. They don't all look the same, but are all set up the same way. Once you find a shop chest, you will notice that they are laid out something like this. The top row will display the items being sold, and the coins found in the row below represent its sale price. Note that supplies are limited. 
To buy an item, simply deposit the required money into the bottom row of the chest, and place the purchased items into your inventory. It's as easy as that. Flashback events are how the Old Ones Army events are incorporated into the world of Mystic. These events are located at the ruins of destroyed landmarks of the past. They can be identified by a platform of emerald gem spark blocks that light up once stepped on. These events are shown how the ruins came to be and the destruction caused by the Old Ones Army. In order to start a flashback event, all players must be standing on the gem spark platform and then the host may end the game in order to load up the corresponding event map. Once the map loads up, you may complete the event as many times as you wish before returning to the main world. All rules still apply to these event worlds. That's all. Thank you for watching this intro guide to Mystic Ante. If you have any questions or would like to see more detailed explanations about anything you've seen here, just let me know in the comments below or in our Discord. Please keep in mind that Mystic is a work in progress and that nothing that you see here is final. If you would like to keep up with my progress, consider subscribing or joining the Discord for updates and announcements. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.